So what we're talking about here is the uh, utility or uh, I guess you can even say a specific technique of tracing a photo. Uh, before we get into it, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First would be, let's see, ethical issues. So you really cannot, should not, and never trace someone else's art and call it your own. That is not a good thing. You will always get caught. Inevitably, you will get caught, and it will not be a, a good time for you. Uh, tracing a photograph and not giving credit to the photographer. If you're using someone else's photograph, um, do your best to find out who took the photograph or who owns the copyright to that photograph and include some form of uh, credit back to that photographer. Uh, this is especially true if your uh, final result looks a lot like the original photograph. In other words, there's not a significant uh, percentage of difference between the original photograph and your final artwork. Uh, using your own photographs, well, they're yours. You took them, uh, you own the right to them, unless for some reason uh, you sign a contract with a model who retains rights, which you should never do. Either way, it's your photograph. You can make it look exactly like it. You can make it look uh, different. Uh, it's totally up to you. So there really isn't that big of a deal. The ethical part comes in when you try to convince people, no, I did not use a photograph for reference or a trace or whatever. So you're basically lying and saying that you have the ability to draw that amount of detail and or uh, anatomy out of your head which people can do I've seen it there are people who can do that but if you can't don't lie to yourself above all and don't lie to others saying that you can the primary reason that you're going to want to trace is to teach yourself uh, this is a great learning aid especially if you uh, can't afford to go to get into a school and or you're wanting to prepare Let's say you're in high school and you're trying to get into an art school. Uh, tracing is a good way to really help you to see what it is you're trying to draw or recreate. And that's really what drawing is. It's not about technique. It's not about tools. It's about how to see what it is in front of you. Uh, and you're going to understand that once we start the demonstration. You're going to understand how to understand the mass of the object. In other words, all these big clunky parts that fit together and understand how to give weight to the object. Even though it's sitting still, it still has a weight to it. There's gravity pulling on it, especially if it's uh, a humanoid figure, which, by the way, is what we're going to be dealing with are uh, human figures. How to apply the basics of art and design. So if you don't know what those are, you need to stop right now and... Uh, go and find out what they are line shape form rhythm hue. you know all those things you need to understand what they are and how they're implemented in art focus on color and texture so if you're tracing a photograph you don't need to worry about proportions you don't need to worry about shape form uh, it's all there for you uh, you're basically skipping all of that and you're going straight into color and texture at that point and, and again that's a simplified uh, method but it'll make sense once we start with the actual uh, project and uh, this is especially true if you're new to drawing and or painting uh, you can establish much better eye hand coordination if you're doing this digitally uh, and you have a tablet uh, especially if you're using a tablet now I'm not talking about the screen tablets where you draw on the screen I'm talking about uh, you know the piece of hardware that attaches to the computer it's a tablet it's pressure sensitive uh, and you look at the monitor while you draw. So in other words, you're disassociated your view from your hand, from the paper, to looking at the monitor and your hand separate. And you're looking at a cursor. So it, it, it definitely builds that eye-hand coordination, which a lot of people, especially people beginning, uh, just either don't have or they've never uh, worked in that method and, and they have to develop it. And it does build your visual vocabulary but it's not as strong as if it were uh, drawing from life or not tracing. And it's a different way of thinking. Uh, you're, it's just a different way of thinking. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, time. Now let's say that you're a professional and you have a client who needs something done yesterday. Well, you're not going to take the time to 
draw it from your head and try to find a reference, uh, try to get a model to come in and draw from the model. Um, you're most likely going to get a model or yourself, take a photograph, and use that as your reference art. You're going to do whatever you can to help you get that project done on time or when it's needed. Uh, if not, you're not getting paid. Uh, it's Obviously, it's faster than sight sizing and other methods of drawing. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, feel free to look that up. Uh, accuracy. If, let's say that you're hired or commissioned to do a portrait, obviously you want a likeness in that portrait. So you're going to most, in many cases, you're going to go and you're going to photograph your subject uh, in various different lighting and uh, positions. And you're going to pick the best one and you're going to use that. You can trace it and use that to get those exact proportions in that likeness. It's, and again, it's a massive learning aid in combination with other drawing methods. And what that means is do not think of this as uh, an end-all method of drawing. Um, it can become a crutch very easily. Uh, if you're constantly relying on photographs to get your work done, at some point there's not going to be a photograph for what you want. And you're going to have to come out with some, use your imagination, use that visual vocabulary to pull information out and put it down onto the screen or paper. So that will happen eventually. Uh, it may be years, it may be tomorrow, but it, it's going to happen and you need to be ready. So don't rely on tracing as um, your main method of getting things started. All right, so we'll take that out of the way. And what we have, this is an old picture of me when, for whatever reason, I shaved all my hair off. Uh, we're at a sushi restaurant. It looks like I just finished. And, you know, we've got a couple of objects in the foreground. We've got a middle ground here, which would be the, my gut, I guess, or actually the whole figure. And then we have a background, which is the, this back wall and windows here and other people. But all were considered... I'm sorry, all we can, are concerned with is getting this figure here. And maybe, you know, we, we might include this. This is a neat little uh, sake dispenser thing. Um, we might include that. Uh, we may include the bottle. Uh, we don't necessarily have to. Um, but since it does obscure things and, and, you know, the focus, again, is just straight up tracing. We're not trying to pull stuff or recreate things here right now. So we're probably going to include these objects in overlap. So I'm working in Photoshop. This is uh, Photoshop 2019 CC. And uh, you're probably going to notice that a lot of the tools are missing on the screen. That's because I have them on my second monitor here. That's my brushes. Uh, that was the, this is my layers palette. So I, periodically I'll, I might drag these over and show you what it is I'm doing to set this up. Now, this is a fairly decent size image. It's called full size. Uh, it's a cell phone image, so it's not going to be really sharp and really big. Uh, it's probably like a five by seven, a 300. So, let's find out. Roughly, yeah, six by eight. <clears throat> six and a half by eight and a half. Uh, I'm not going to get into resolution or anything. It doesn't have to be big. If uh, you're just doing this to test it out, you can work with any kind of size or image. Uh, but again, try to get something with a figure because that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Let's bring this to full screen. Now when you bring it into Photoshop, it's going to be on the background layer. You can click this little icon, little lock icon here. Let's, uh, do that and increase that into a layer so now I can move this around independently of the document itself. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to make two additional layers. Uh, we're going to make one layer above. Let's just call that uh, the trace. And I'm going to make one below. And uh, what I did was I selected the layer I wanted to be below. I hold down control and I click on the new layer button. And that puts the layer below the one I have selected. And with that one, I'm going to fill it with white. Um, and while I'm doing this, I need to mention, I'm using the uh, add-on Colorus or Coolerus. 
not sure how it's pronounced. Uh, this thing is amazing. It's really inexpensive add-on for Photoshop. Um, but if you have trouble with working in color or understanding color theory, man, this thing, this thing is, is just the bomb. It really is nice. So I'm going to select white, and then I'm going to fill this background layer. So I'm going to hide the others, and I'm just going to fill it with white. Um, and the way I did that was I hit Alt and Backspace. And that will fill it with your foreground color here. Uh, if you're new to Photoshop, you may want to go and find a tutorial about understanding the interface and how to move around it and what certain things are because I'm not going to fully explain certain things. So then we have our three layers. We're going to go to layer zero, let's rename that, let's call it ref. And this will be our background, so let's call it background for now. Now let's go to the reference layer, and I'm going to reduce that opacity until it becomes very faint. Not too faint, obviously, but just enough so that when I draw over this, I'll be able to see the marks that I'm making. Brush tool, and you can use anything uh, as long as it's roughly a square or, and or round object or brush, I mean. You don't want anything too oblong or something with, a, something with a lot of texture. Keep it simple. So I've got a special brush that I have here. It's called Sketcher. And you can see it's got a little bit of a texture, just enough so that it doesn't look like a solid black line. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to do is I want to get the outside mass. In other words, I want the whole mass of this object or this person. And you'll notice I keep referring it to an object. Uh, that's important later on, especially when you're drawing from life. Don't think of it as a face. Just think of it as shapes. So I want to get the shape of the head, the shoulders, and the arms. Now, when you first start doing this, I'm going to hit tab to hide everything. When you first start doing this, um, it may be that you want to come in and do something like this. All right. Um, you could do that. I don't recommend it because it's going to look really stiff once you're done with all these lines that are uh, pretty much the same width and they're all really kind of squiggly little lines. Uh, yeah, you can turn on smoothing and use the uh, pull string and all that stuff, but it would take much longer. So what I'm going to do is basically chip away at it. Alright, so really just uh, what would you call this? Kind of hash marks, I guess. Now I'm not going to come into the face just yet. Like I said, I want to get the outline or the uh, contour of the entire shape here. Um, you can rotate your image by holding down the R key. And this is available if your uh, graphics card uh, is supported by Photoshop. I got a little bit of a contour crossing over there. That's okay. All right, so let's get this in. You see, I'm not doing a lot of uh, noodling. I'm not coming in. I'm, you know, I'm not making myself frustrated by like, oh, there's hair. I better leave room for the hair. No, I'll help with that, man. Just go in, draw it. Put the lines in for the shapes that you want. And you know, while you're doing this, it's important that you think about well, what is the shape that I'm drawing? <clears throat> you know, I'll, 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 every now and then I'll add a little hash mark or a contour that crosses inward, and a uh, hash mark that crosses inward. To remind me, you know, there's, there's a sleeve there or something. Uh, here we have this one area that's in shadow. Alright, a couple of uh, lumps there for the wrinkles. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to there we go, bring in that form there. And then let's do the hands, the forearm. You'll see I'm drawing through that 
because I know that's where that shape continues. Uh, you don't necessarily have to. You can skip it for now, but I know that's going to be drawn in later. All right. So let's get this. And you see, I'm not agonizing over being exact here. I'm not try I don't want to be exact. I don't want this to be a 100% representation of the photograph. And it's kind of fits the purpose, in my opinion. It's, you know, you, you got the damn photograph. Why are you recreating it? Uh, that's not to say there's no value in photorealistic art. Um, but as a learning aid right now, that is not what you need to be focused on. All right. Just hit escape, it resets my rotation. <clears throat> uh, you're probably wondering, you know, what do I do to resize my brush? I have the buttons on my pen. The, uh, the button closest to the nib, or the end of the pen, is right click. So I can hold that down and it'll give me the option to pick brushes. Or not, not hold it down, but click it one time. You can hold it down if you want to. Uh, the other is if I hold down Alt and right click, as long as I have a tool that supports it, I can resize my brush dynamically. And you're going to see it do this weird thing. That's the tilt function of the brush there. So don't worry about that. You don't need it if your tablet does not support it. <clears throat> you can also use the bracket keys. Uh, they step up in increments. Uh, it really depends on what you're familiar with. Uh, if you're not familiar with either of those, I suggest trying the Alt and Right button. It's a very useful little thing to have on the fly. Alright, so let's look at what we got so far. I don't know if you hear it. It's my cat's throwing a fit back here at something. Yeah, it's registering. Kitty! Kitty! What the hell is wrong, kitty? That's what I thought. Nothing. Alright, so... What do we have here? Well, now we've got our rough outline. We have our block information there. And... Yeah, so that's a good start. So now what I want to do is I want to go in I'm going to start working on the face and maybe adding in some of these shadows and detail. You know, I use the word detail to describe uh, these elements that I'm seeing here, like this cast shadow from, the sun, or from my uh, glasses and that highlight that, that it's making there on the cheeks. Uh, I'm not talking about detail as in every little hair, um, every eyelash, things like that. I don't need that. Uh, you want to avoid doing those things. Uh, think about, again, shapes. Think about where the light comes in and it hits this object. What shape does it make? Uh, an example being, it's really faint. Let me bring this up a little bit. And you can kind of see where this front, wrong layer, where this uh, brow ridge is right here. All right, so I'm going to mark that in. And then we've got this hot spot, so to speak, there and there. Uh, really thin glasses, thin frame. I believe these are the ones that I broke. Yeah, they are. Alright, so let's put that in roughly. And I'm kind of working straight down. You don't have to. You can skip around. I mean, you know, your, your model's not going to move. Let's put in some shapes for the eyebrows. Again, I'm just blocking that in. I'm not worrying about it being completely exact. Alright, there's this shape here for the eye socket. It kind of recedes inward and then it pops back out where the ball of the eye is and it deforms those eyelids. Alright, again, it's just shapes. And now comes this shape. Looks like bird wings. Strong overhead light. Of, you know, I think it's actually like right up here somewhere. <clears throat> nostrils, nostril 
holes. Oops. That's another benefit of working with these smaller marks is I can just undo it if I'm not happy with it. All right, just little folds there. This is my I'm thinking about something. Uh, look, a little furrow going on there with the mouth. We'll put this in there. There you go. Add in the shadow the bottom of the nose. We've got a highlight here. It fades out. Fades outward there. And then we've got some more subtleties. We've got a little bit of a cast light. This object back here. Actually, it's light from outside, so it's going to be a little cooler. Reflecting off all that metal. Uh, hide this for now. Get the jaw. Get that beautiful double chin in there. Alright, get that goatee. The neck loops, neckline of the shirt. There we go. And the shadow of the head. Now wrinkles and stuff, these could be a little tricky, and I'll explain that. Let me go ahead and put the sleeves in here so I'll know where to end those. Alright, so wrinkles are basically uh, light and dark. So you've got a highlight, you've got a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the shadow. And I'll put little hash marks in there to remind me, yes, this is a wrinkle and this is the shadow area of it. It's a little dark in there. Now it's important to remember not all of these shadows have the same value, okay? Ones that are further down here appear to be darker. They're a little further away from the light. Some have more light, making the shadows a little darker than the others. And as you can see here, this side's almost completely in shadow, with just a little bit more of that blue light casting on back right there. Now I'm not going to go in and add in all of these wrinkles, even though know, there's only five wrinkles here. Uh, there's no need to. Um, you know, I know at some point the final image you're going to want the viewers eyes to rest you don't want all this detail to just be beating beating them over the head you want places where the eye can rest where there's not as much detail there's not as much uh, granular information all right so let's take a look at what we have now all right looks like a monster but again you know we're not trying to recreate the, the uh, image right off the bat. I'm giving myself landmarks. I'm giving myself, uh, basically, if you think of it, paint by numbers. These are the areas that I want information to be in or around. So I want the face to be the focus. So I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to start looking at all of these subtleties. There's another cast light there hot spot kind of happens along there. So now I want to work on these objects here. And you'll notice I'm zooming out. And the reason I'm zooming out is if I come in and I try to get this shape, it's going to take a little longer. If I zoom out, then I can move my arm and my wrist 
a lot freer. So, you know, don't stay zoomed in all the time. Zoom out some, give yourself some breathing room. I'm like, there's a little tiny drip of sake right there. Just want to make sure that I remember that. And, you know, don't be afraid to rotate. You know, if, if you can't get that angle, rotate it. You know, for me, it's easier to pull the line down than it is to push the line up. Uh, it may be different for you. In whichever case it is, uh, rotate accordingly. As you can see, all my lines are pretty much being pulled. All right. And if you're thinking of this as a container or anything like that, you're going to have a problem when you rotate it. So this line to remind me is a high light in there. We got this little wrapped wire. And I'll mark that. And, uh, I know that's on the inside. I don't really need that. Yeah, let's do these shadows here. It has a lit. I mean, it's not a perfect cylinder. It's got little tiny bumps, like a, you know, as if it were real bamboo. I think it's actually uh, ceramic. There we go. Now let's get the shadow of this hand. Now we have this, and that's pretty much, uh, this is normally where I would stop, um, if I were tracing this for a final image, I'm going to separate these arms a little more. So I know, <clears throat> just from experience, I know that I do have an upper lip. <laughs> Most of us do. I don't think it's that big though. Most of this is going to be a shadow. But the chin's kind of pushed forward a little bit. So There's going to be a, high, a little tiny highlight there, one there. And what's happening is these two pieces of skin are reflecting off of each other. So they're going to be a little bit brighter. Not by much, but they they are brighter to some point. <clears throat> okay, so there you go. That's how you trace the image. Pretty simple, right? Uh, I say go ahead, give it a try. See what you come up with, um, and remember, you know, be you're you're a creative person. Be creative think before you put down a mark I mean there's no point in me coming in here and drawing all of this or tracing all of this when I don't want it you know I don't need it I think this is a much more interesting composition it's got a, a better rhythm to it boom 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 uh, it's got a nice place for our eye to rest here uh, we've got some nice movement happening uh, it's not perfectly centered so yeah you know, this could work as a nice portrait. Uh, at this stage, what I will do is just go ahead and bring this back up. And I'm going to add in a uh, black and white adjustment layer, quick auto. There we go. And now I've got my values. So I'm going to collapse that down. Now, if you're uh, still new to all of this, you'll see. I've got some areas here that I've missed. Let me zoom out. Little hot spot there. Really faint one right here. Oh, I 
forgot this little highlight one of the sake in there. Um, so if you have trouble seeing these details or, or understanding, okay, what what is it I'm tracing here? Why why am I doing this and not that? Um, oops, wrong layer again. Just come back up. I just saw this, so I'm gonna fix it. Uh, what you can do is select a layer. This is uh, one I collapsed. And I'm going to add in a levels adjustment layer. Just turn off my trace. So if I want all of the uh, blacks, in other words, if I want to know where all the darkest darks are, I'll move everything towards the left. And not all the way. If you go all the way, it's going to wash out. You know, same way with the other, this is my mental values. I'm going to push those two all the way over and then take my light. And this is showing me where the darks are. All right. So I'm going to switch this sketch back on. And, you know, that's dark. That's dark. You know, all this up here is dark. And what I'm looking at is, is this value of darkness the same as, say, this value over here? Uh, no, it's not. So that's an important thing to remember. Is this dark the same as this dark in the wrinkle? No, it's not. What about this? Is, you know, this area over here the same as this? I have to go turn that off. Is that the same dark as that? No. Actually, this one's darker. It's a shinier object, so it's going to have a little more contrast. And by default, things with higher contrast, uh, you know, or glossiness, sorry, let me rephrase that. Things that are glossy by default have a much higher contrast, so they're going to have much brighter whites and much darker darks. All right, and then we've got this over here. So, you know, is this the same dark as that? <clears throat> and this is more about painting, this is more about values. Because right now, you know, even with our uh, trace, we still don't have that information. All right. So now, if you want to know where all the light areas, where your lightest areas, we'll take that and really there are none, so to speak, in there. So I want to move this forward a little bit. There we go. And it looks like you can kind of see this little dip, this little uh, peak right here. All right, and that's where the values start to increase on the face. Let's bring this down, 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 down. Yep, there we go. So now what we have our lightest areas is hot spots on the face here, on the nose, the glasses, of course, uh, and the hand. Uh, you know, looking at it at first glance, you wouldn't think this is going to be the brighter, uh, but it is. It's, it's more in direct light because there is a, a light that's hovering above just out of the photograph. And it's going to, this hand, because it's closer to it, it's going to pick up more of that light. Yep, this as well. Uh, I'm surprised that the bottle. You would think it would have more, uh, but it's not facing enough direct light to get those hot spots. Just really right here where the light sources are, or light source, sorry. So that's how you can kind of, you know, help yourself to see, you know, where the brights and the darks are. And that's through the uh, levels adjustment layer. So you got a choice now. Now that you've got your tracing we'll say it's done. Now you got your tracing done, you're going to need that photograph to come in and start painting. Uh, and that's going to be the next video is what to do after you trace. But I'll go ahead, let's go ahead and set that up now. So I'm going to have roughly three, maybe four uh, reference images to work from. And what I want is, I want to get those lights, those highlights. Now, I'm, I normally don't do this, 
uh, I've gotten, you know, just through repetition, I can pick these things out by looking. But it still, it helps. It helps a lot. So there's this one. I'm going to come up here and I've got my export, quick export set up for JPEG. So I'm going to export that out. Uh, and we're going to put that under Trace Exports. And we'll call this uh, HL for highlights. And now let's do the darks. I want to bring this over a little more. Get a better representation there of what where the darks are. Alright, so then I want to export, quick export. And I'm going to call that just darks. Now we got highlights and darks, really what's left is the middle values. Alright, so it's almost posterized look to it, but this is going to help me see and understand, okay, this is light source. These, these, are these, these shapes are being formed by these shadows. So in other words, I've removed all of the middle values. And now I'm just straight up black and white. So, oops, not say that. So we won't export. All right, and then I'm just going to call this BW black and white. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, the way I work, and you may work differently. Uh, is I, you know, you can start in the middle value is going to be once I block everything. In. Okay, so what we got here? I'm gonna I want to switch over to my second monitor, and I'm going to open up these reference images. I think what I need is some more folders. What do you think? All right, it's under exports. They need to be put it in the wrong folder. All right, so I have a program. It's called. Let me load it up here. Pure Ref, I believe it's called. Um, about there we go. Pure Ref, and it's at pureref.com, and uh, I've got mine set up so that it's always on top. You'll see that wherever I click, it's always going to be up top. <clears throat> and this is really, really useful application. Because what I can do is I can come in now and add in these other two images. All right. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to hit Control-P. That's going to organize them for me. And I can use my mouse wheel to move in and scroll out, scroll in, scroll out. Uh, middle mouse button down allows you to move it right mouse button to select I'm sorry right mouse button is to move the actual pure ref uh, canvas if I select something and I hit space bar it's going to zoom in zoom back out if I hold down control and alt I can scale if I hold down control and shift I can rotate if I hold down Alt and Shift, I can flip horizontally or vertically. So you've got a lot of really nice features uh, that are very, very useful when working with reference. All right, so I left out one, the other really important one, and that's the actual image itself. So I'm going to export that out. Um, We'll just call it actual. And we'll bring that in too. There we go. And you notice I don't have I don't work with color. Uh, I rarely use color references. Uh, I prefer to, you know, if I'm gonna mess stuff up, I want it to be my mess. So uh, I will create colors myself on the fly. Another option is if you've got images, let's say, that are different sizes, 
you can control A or select left click and drag and then right click you can go to images uh, arrange optimal name whatever align uh, you can do normalize I'm going to normalize size and what it will do is it'll find the average of all the sizes and then create everything to that size I believe that's what it's doing all right, so let's put them back there then I'm going to move this off to the side here okay and now I should be ready to go in and start uh, painting 